Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over six worked examples to show you how to do problems involving charged particles moving in Earth's magnetic field. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you can apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question 1 says to explain why charged particles entering the Earth's magnetic field will follow a helical path. Well, straight from the theory, remember that if a charged particle enters the Earth's magnetic field at an angle, the two components of the particle's velocity cause it to follow a helical path. The component perpendicular to the magnetic field creates a circular motion, and this is usually termed V sine theta, whilst the parallel component, which is V cos theta, creates the pitch in the helix. So to sketch an example, it would look something like this. So we've got the magnetic field direction going to the right here, and the electron with a velocity vector coming in at an angle to this magnetic field, and it causes this helical motion. And remember, this is going to create something called the pitch in the helix, which is this distance between two adjacent loops. So you've got the perpendicular component V sine theta causing this circular motion up here, and the parallel component V cos theta causing the pitch in the helix. Question 2 says an electron moves to the right with a speed of 4.8 times 10 to the 6 meters per second at right angles to a uniform magnetic field upwards of magnetic induction 650 millitesla. Calculate the force acting on the electron. Hint, remember to include direction since force is a vector. Well, if we sketch what's going on first of all, here's my magnetic field direction B, and we have an electron over on the left, and we can show that it's moving to the right and towards the magnetic field. And remember, this is at right angles, so we can write down what we know from the question. We're trying to find the force F. We know that the charge in the electron is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs from the data sheet. The velocity V is 4.8 times 10 to the 6 meters per second, and the magnetic induction B is 650 millitesla, which I'm going to convert into tesla, so that's 650 times 10 to the minus 3 tesla. So writing down our equation, we have F equals QVB. Substituting in our numbers gives 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 times 4.8 times 10 to the 6 times 650 times 10 to the minus 3. And putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 5.0 times 10 to the minus 13 newtons. Now remember we need the direction because force is a vector. So using the right hand rule, you can point your index finger, i.e. your first finger, towards the top of the page or top of the screen. And you can then move your hand so that your second finger, i.e. your middle finger, is pointing to the right. And if you do that, then you should see that your thumb points in towards the page or the screen. So we can therefore say the direction is into the page. And there's our final answer, 5.0 times 10 to the minus 13 newtons into the page. And we found the direction using the right hand rule. Question 3 says a proton moves to the left with a speed of 3.0 times 10 to the 4 meters per second at right angles to a uniform magnetic field downwards. The magnetic induction is 0.8 tesla. The charge in the proton is plus 1e. Calculate the force acting on the proton. Well, just like in question 2, force is a vector, so we're going to try and find the direction as well as the magnitude. So let's just sketch what's going on first of all. So we've got the magnetic induction B going down the way. We have our positively charged proton on the right, which is moving to the left in this case at right angles to the field. And writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the force F. We note the charge in the proton is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And remember that's just the same magnitude as the electron charge, but the opposite sign. But we're not really caring about the signs in this case. We have the velocity V equals 3.0 times 10 to the 4 meters per second. And lastly, the magnetic induction B is 0.8 tesla. So writing down our equation, we have F equals QVB. Substituting in the numbers gives us 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 times 3.0 times 10 to the 4 times 0.8. And putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 3.8 times 10 to the minus 15 newtons. And then we need to get the direction using the right hand rule. So again, pointing your index finger, i.e. your first finger, going down the way towards the bottom of the page or bottom of the screen. And you can then move your hand so that your middle finger, i.e. your second finger, moves towards the left. And if you do that, you should see that your thumb points into the page. But remember, because this is a positively charged particle, we need to reverse the direction. So we're going to reverse from into the page to being out of the page. So our direction is out of the page. And that gives us a final answer of 3.8 times 10 to the minus 15 newtons out of the page. And again, we've found the direction using the right hand rule. Question 4 says an electron experiences a force of 2.5 times 10 to the minus 13 newtons as it moves at right angles to a uniform magnetic field of magnetic induction 350 millitesla. Calculate the speed of the electron. So this time we're not trying to find the force, we're trying to find the speed. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the speed V. We know that the force F is 2.5 times 10 to the minus 13 newtons. We know that the charge Q on the electron is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs from the data sheet. And the magnetic induction B is 350 millitesla, which we need to convert into tesla. So that gives us 350 times 10 to the minus 3 tesla. 
Writing down our equation, we have f equals qvb. Substituting in the numbers gives us 2.5 times 10 to the minus 13 equals 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 times v times 350 times 10 to the minus 3. So what I would do is multiply this term here by this term and then divide this by the answer to get v on its own. So we end up with v equals 4.5 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. Question 5 says an electron moves with a speed of 3.8 times 10 to the 6 meters per second perpendicular to a uniform magnetic field of magnetic induction 480 microtesla into the page. So you'll see the charged particle is moving downwards with a velocity v and the magnetic field is into the page shown by the crosses. It then says to calculate the centripetal force acting on the electron. Well, remember that the magnetic force provides a centripetal force here. So to calculate the centripetal force, we can simply just calculate the magnetic force from F equals QVB because they're going to be equal to each other. So we're trying to find F. We know the charge Q on the electron is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. The speed V is 3.8 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. And lastly, the magnetic induction B is 480 microtesla, which we need to convert into tesla, which is 480 times 10 to the minus 6 tesla. So writing down our equation, we have F equals QVB. Substituting in the numbers gives us 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 times 3.8 times 10 to the 6 times 480 times 10 to the minus 6. And putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 2.9 times 10 to the minus 16 newtons. Now remember force is a vector, so we need to use the right hand rule to determine the direction. So if you take your index finger, i.e. your first finger, and point it into the page or screen, and then move your hand so that your middle finger, i.e. your second finger, is pointing down the way in the direction of this particle, i.e. towards the bottom of the page or screen, then you should see your thumb points towards the left. And that means our direction is to the left. So our final answer here is 2.9 times 10 to the minus 16 newtons to the left. And again, we've found the direction using the right hand rule there. Part B then says to calculate the radius of the circular orbit taken by the electron. Well, now I can use the equation for centripetal force F equals mv squared over r because I'm trying to find what r is the radius and we now know what the force F is. So I'm trying to find what R is. We know the force F from part A is 2.9 times 10 to the minus 16 newtons because those forces are going to be equivalent. We know that the mass M is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms from the data sheet for an electron. And lastly, the speed V is 3.8 times 10 to the six meters per second. So writing down our equation, we have F equals MV squared over R for centripetal force. Substituting in the numbers gives us 2.9 times 10 to the minus 16 is equal to 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 times 3.8 times 10 to the 6 squared divided by r. And then to get r on its own, we can cross multiply. So I'm going to swap the r with this term here and then put it into my calculator. And don't forget to square this term on the numerator. So if you put that in, you should get an answer of r equals 4.5 times 10 to the minus 2 meters, or in other words, 45 millimeters. Lastly, question 6 says that an electron travelling at a constant speed of 6.8 times 10 to the 6 metres per second enters a uniform magnetic field at an angle of 70 degrees as shown and subsequently follows a helical path. The magnetic induction is 230 millitesla. So you can see the electrons coming in at an angle here and the velocity vector makes an angle of 70 degrees to the horizontal. We've got the pitch labelled and the magnetic field going to the right. It then says to calculate the component of the electron's initial velocity parallel to B. Well, remember the parallel component is going to be given by V cos theta. So we can write down V parallel equals V cos theta, which is 6.8 times 10 to the 6 times cos 70, which if you put into your calculator, gives you an answer of 2.3 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. Part B then says to calculate the component of the electron's initial velocity perpendicular to B. So this time we're going to calculate V sine theta. So we can say that V perpendicular equals V sine theta, which is 6.8 times 10 to the 6 times sine 70, which equals 6.4 times 10 to the 6 meters per second once you put it into your calculator. Part C then says to calculate the centripetal force acting on the electron. Well, just like we did in question 5, we can say that the magnetic force provides a centripetal force. So in order to calculate the centripetal force, we can use the equation F equals QVB because the forces are going to be the same. So writing down what we know, we're trying to find the force F. We know the charge Q on the electron is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. The velocity V that we take here is going to be the perpendicular component of the velocity 
velocity, which is the 6.4 times 10 to the 6 meters per second that we found out above. And that's because, remember, it's the perpendicular component of the velocity that produces the circular motion. So we need to use that component of the velocity here. And lastly, the magnetic induction B is 230 millitesla, which I'm going to convert into tesla. So that's 230 times 10 to the minus 3 tesla. Writing down the equation, we have F equals QVB. Substituting in the numbers gives 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 times 6.4 times 10 to the 6 times 230 times 10 to the minus 3. And putting that into a calculator should give you an answer of 2.36 times 10 to the minus 13 newtons. And remember, centripetal force acts towards the center of the circular path. Next, we're asked to calculate the radius of the helix. So we can do similar to what we did in question five and use the expression for centripetal force, F equals mv squared over r, since we now know what F is, and obviously this equation has r in it. So we're trying to find r. We know that F is 2.36 times 10 to the minus 13 newtons from part C. We know the mass m is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms for an electron from the data sheet. And the velocity v is given by the perpendicular component of velocity that we used earlier, 6.4 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. So writing down our equation for centripetal force, we have f equals mv squared over r. Substituting in the numbers gives 2.36 times 10 to the minus 13 equals 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 times 6.4 times 10 to the 6 squared divided by r, where r is what we're trying to find. So if we cross multiply here and get r on its own on the left hand side, this is the same as swapping the r and this term here. So we can do r equals this numerator divided by this value here. And remember to square the value on the numerator. So if we put that into a calculator, you should get an answer of r equals 1.6 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. Note here that we also could have used the expression for the radius of curvature, r equals mv over qb, which we saw how to derive in the theory video. Part E says to calculate the period of rotation in the helix, so this is the period T. So here we're going to use the slightly simpler way of finding the period of rotation, which involves the circumference of the circular motion. So we're trying to find the period T, we know the radius of curvature is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 4 meters, and the component of the velocity V causing the circular motion is the perpendicular one, which has a value of 6.4 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. So writing down our equation in terms of speed, distance and time, we have the period t equals the circumference over the speed v, which is equal to 2 pi r over v. And then we can sub in our values where v is actually the perpendicular component. So we have 2 pi times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 4 divided by 6.4 times 10 to the 6. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 10 seconds. Now note that we could have also used the derived expression from the notes, which is t equals 2 pi m over qb, which is derived, remember, from finding the frequency f, first of all, using the fact that omega equals v over r, and by equating the two forces, f equals qvb, with f equals mv squared over r, and doing a bit of manipulation and rearranging. And since period t equals 1 over f, you can end up with this expression here, which we could have also used. So if you try that yourself using the values from this question, you should end up with roughly the same answer. Lastly, part F says to calculate the pitch of the helix. So let's call the pitch small p. And remember the pitch is caused by the parallel component of the velocity, which we saw and calculated in part A. And this is 2.3 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. We also have the period t, which we've just found is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 10 seconds. So writing down our equation for the pitch of the helix, we have p equals v cos theta t, which is the same as the v parallel times t, so this was our v parallel term here. And substituting in our numbers, we have 2.3 times 10 to the 6 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 10. And putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 3.7 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.